Hello, Glenn Parker. Thank you very much for joining me. I wanted to do a, a, a quick video before this just to preface what's going to happen and what, what was going on. Um, for the interview, I didn't find out about it until the last minute. My buddy Josh told me about it. Um, I finagled getting out of work early. I just was honest and upfront with them. I'm like, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to a book signing and this is who I'm going to go see. Excuse me, and I wanted to get a book for my mom signed and send it to her as a gift. And um, she was a big fan, and uh, you know she loved Torchwood, she loved Doctor Who, and uh, she wanted, you know, she didn't know about this. She she already had one of the books, but um, I was going to send her one that was signed. So I told him that they're like, okay, you can leave early then. That's no worries. And he allowed me to grab one of the little cameras we were using to do merchandising, to take photos and, and post them online for eBay and stuff like that. And uh, so I grabbed one of these little guys um, that was able to do continuous shooting. Uh, and it wasn't the best resolution, but it was great for the time. So we got there. We didn't stop to eat. We just, well, let's not take a chance. Let's go ahead and get there and figure it out when we get there. Good thing, because when we got there, which was substantially early, hour and a half, two hours early, it was already busy. And it was already a substantial line. And I uh, recognized tons of friends, people I knew from Gallifrey and other types of conventions and sci-fi, um, other sci-fi nuts, if you want to call it. And people that are diehard enough to go and wait in line for a couple hours to get a, to get a book signed. Now, normally, I don't do book signings, um, you know, red carpets and stuff like that. It's a different story, but do, just to do go book, do a book signing now. And it wasn't just to get it signed for my mom. I thought it would be a unique experience to be able to sit, um, well, stand face to face with him and have a quick conversation, which was fun. Um, <clears throat> but when we got there, I went ahead and, and walked the line. I included that footage and showed everybody in line and how epic the line already was when we got there. Um, I also, I think during that, the course of doing that, I caught John Barrowman's um, partner, and business partner and partner, life partner, uh, in front of the store talking, uh, just doing some business. I didn't mean to catch him, I was just filming everything. And uh, he kind of wandered off because he noticed that I was filming and he was talking business. But I caught him, I believe. And um, then I walked back through the line. So... When we get inside, and it is not a huge bookstore, it is not small, but it is not huge at all. Um, all the people that were waiting in line, they were able to fit inside and be able to at least give them some point of view to be able to see and, and, and hear him. And they were simply amazing, and I'm really surprised they squeezed all these people into this tiny little bookstore. And I was looking online when I was inspired after, what is it, like, it's 2015 now, this was 2008, is quite nearly quite a number of years. Um, I was looking to see if anybody else posted it, and there was somebody else filming um, that was down and way around the corner um, from a different point of view altogether. I was lucky when we got in, when, where we stopped, we stopped right at the press area where the press was doing it. So they gave them, obviously, the best point of view and the best angle. So I was right at the press angle, so I was able to get something with this little tiny camera that was fantastic. Uh, in a first point of view. Now, obviously, on the pie, tripod, I'm holding this bad boy the whole time, but um, the essence of it is there. Now, he was not going to, he was supposed to do a reading, um, but he's, when we started, he's like, well, I detest readings, and uh, I'm going to do this high entire, would everybody be okay if we just did questions and answers the entire time? He's like, yay, <laughs> no worries there. Everybody was pretty happy. Um, and then I included some footage afterward to kind of show how crammed and crowded this bookstore was, how many people were actually in there. Um, and then I stuck a photo right after this video of um, my signing of, of him and his sister. And his sister was pretty cool as well. And they have stories, they were trading stories back and forth, and she's hearing things that he's saying that she doesn't want to know. And, you know, there's a lot of stuff being tossed back and forth, and they're very cute, and it was a lot of fun. And uh, so, uh, enjoy. I hope that introduction was helpful, and um, if you... If you like this, like and comment and uh, share this because this is, I think, is a pretty awesome, and a pretty awesome, and it's a unique piece. I'm glad somebody else was able to get that up there too, and it's already up on YouTube for people to enjoy. I think it has like four or five thousand views, and uh, which is pretty epic. It shows you, you know, how much this that he's sought after. So, and there's 
<clears throat> there's no questions, uh, there's no shortage of interesting questions and answers in this video, let me tell you. This is pretty interesting. So enjoy and thank you very much for joining me. I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, do let me know during the comments like what you think of this. <laughs> thank you very much. We have all the fans here. <laughs> I am online and um, I don't know you're So, it's off in the beginning. <laughs> So, we yeah, like to get you guys in. Yeah. Uh, 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 yes. This is <laughs> yes, all the crazy people in line. That's inclusive. Just like me. Uh huh. Uh huh. For prosperity or for whatever. Or for my space page. <laughs> yes, all those crazy people. Some video of me. Go ahead. Just, just, what? Just point it at Glenn. Here. Is it? We're going? Yeah. Here's Glenn. We're at the screening. Not the screening. We're at the book I'm, I'm so used screening? to screening. Book signing. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I don't go to book signings. Book signings of what? Yeah. We do. Uh, here we go. There we go. There we go. Well, here's Glenn. And yes. And no, sorry. It's my bad. We're not at a screening. Sorry. That's all. All right. How's everybody doing tonight? Yeah. Excellent. <laughs> How many people uh, have been to an event here before? <laughs> we love you though. You got some new customers tonight. Yeah, <laughs> new. How many people have never been in these doors before? Oh, uh, yeah. Well, thank you, thank you so much. And I assure you, if you come back here during a non-event time, it's not this crowded. <laughs> it's a lovely store. Thank you. By the way, we're very happy to be presenting our authors tonight, ladies and gentlemen. Presenting Anything Goes, put your hands together for John Barrowman and Carol Barrowman. Yeah. Hi. Hey. Aww. Cool. Um, are you okay, Claire? Okay, this is the famous Claire from the book, if you haven't read it. Yeah. Um, we... We don't really do readings, so we thought we'd do a question and answer for Yay. you. And um, uh, if you really are desperate for a reading, then we we will. But uh, question, I, I, we we like doing the question and answers because also you get to know us a little, you know, a little bit better as you do, like through the book. But 
Also, you get to really see the personality that both my sister and I have. And we like that, to talk. Well, we do. <laughs> yeah, we like to talk. So if anyone has any questions, raise your hand. Yes. Do they have a near the Torquid radio show and what does it concern in Switzerland? I have no idea about the air date, uh, but it, it concerns a, uh, it's about a project called CERN, which is a, uh, um, God, I knew you'd ask me something like that because I don't know shit about it. Um, it's and a, I can't write the answer for him no, right here. No, no, no. It's a uh, it's, um, particle accelerator. Thank you very much. Yeah. And what basically, in a nutshell, what they're doing in CERN, it's a, it's, it's a massive structure underneath the ground, and there's three different sections that are about the size of St. Paul's Cathedral or bigger underground. And there's tunnels that go around. It's like 24 kilometers uh, around, and they, they chuck these particles around. They're creating the Big Bang. Uh, underneath and what happens in Torchwood something goes drastically wrong because if you create a big bang Generally, you'll create another little universe. So there's like a micro universe and all that kind of stuff So you can take it from there because I don't want to give it away too much, but something something comes out of the dark Anyone else? Yes Can you tell us about your next album? Uh, the next album is going to uh, well I can't tell you exact songs on it because we're uh, still, you know, we've decided, I've recorded all the tracks, I finished that two weeks ago, <clears throat> excuse me, and um, we've done all the photography for it, it's just yet, we get to find a title, uh, Gary Barlow has written me a track, which is, uh, those of you who know, take that, um, Gary's, you know, and he rang me when he heard me sing it, he said it's really, really good. <laughs> uh, what else? So, and uh, I'm doing a Keith Urban track on there, which has never been heard in the UK, but it's been heard over here. And then all of the other music, again, most of it are it, it's covers that I have chosen myself uh, from some in the 80s, some in the 90s. Uh, and I'm also putting because a lot of people wrote in and wanted big to hear me sing big, you know, big songs. So I'm putting some musical stuff on there, but we've made them more poppy. So you'll get, um, uh, for instance, we've done uh, Both Sides Now, which is in uh, Priscilla, Queen of the Desert, the Joni Mitchell tune. And um, um, so it's things like that. And I, I, my, my signature with tune, which has become over the last few years, I Am What I Am, we have that in there. And it's the, the Prague Symphony Orchestra that's um, recording with me and all sorts of stuff. The guy who does uh, <coughs> Celine Dion's album is producing it. Also another, the same producer who did Another Side. So is that enough? Good. Yes. If you won't do a reading, will you sing something for us? No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. 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 You know, I'll let my sister sing. Oh no! <laughs> you would flee the room. Yeah. 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 Or you'd shit yourself because it was so bad. <laughs> right in the back. I don't know. Uh, it's it airs tomorrow well it's today now in the uk and i've done i stayed up till three o'clock last night doing all the live links to the uk on uh via, you've seen it already <laughs> via satellite oh my god i mean and i've been out to dinner too with a couple of glasses of red wine <laughs> um yeah no so uh i don't know if it'll be shown over here but i think it should be because it's a, a very revealing uh, documentary and uh, it's um it'll kind of shake the system a bit but it's uh for those of you who don't know it's a documentary it's called uh the make the making of me and it's what makes me gay why am i gay and it's the the, the nature versus nurture argument <clears throat> and i can't tell you what who wins <laughs> but all I'll tell you is that dressing your kid up like a girl ain't going to make him gay. <laughs> or dressing her up like a boy ain't going to make her a lesbian. So, it, you know, it's, uh, it, it's, it challenges... <clears throat> my family have been involved in it. And uh, we look back into my family history uh, to see if there was other gay relatives. And that we thought uh, there might be. Particularly an uncle who went on a lot of hunting trips, fabulously dressed, and had a clean lady. <laughs> <laughs> in the 1930s <laughs> so um yeah so there's uh there's all that kind of stuff but it really goes into the, the the kind of the scientific end of it also which most of the scientific studies are being done in the united states but are not getting any funding and not recognized at all 
And that's, in, that's partially because the people who don't want to give it funding are scared of the outcome and what it will tell them. Um, there's also, you know, it was a risky for, thing for me to do about it as a, as a gay man because I also went in there, I could find out things that I don't want to hear, and I did. So I had to open myself up to that. And um, it's, it's interesting because there's uh, one of the clips, they, they show me, I, I'm in an MRI machine just with the surgical outfit on and uh, an fMRI, sorry. And I'm having my brain scanned, and while I'm being scanned, and they're watching it on the computer. Machine. Yeah, it's a little <laughs> small machine. Hey, he said my brain was fabulous. <laughs> so I'm doing these tests with my hands. I'm pick, they're showing me uh, what they call erotica, but basically with porn. And I was watching it while my brain, they were watching my brain react, and I was telling them with my fingers and, you know, buttons A and B, which I liked a lot or disliked. And what I found out after that is my brain reacts, you know, your brain reacts sexually before you say what you like. So anyway, making a long story short, I had a panic attack, and um, uh, in, in the middle of it, it was very uncomfortable, but those, I forgot what I was talking about. <laughs> I am not helping out at all. The fMRI machine, and you know, so that test, uh, the clip that, uh, that was quite shocking because I sat down with them, they showed me my brain working, which is really amazing, because I sometimes don't think it is there. <laughs> And uh, my family would agree that it's some, I think, think I've shit my brain out, really. Um, but I, I was watching the thing, and uh, I said, so tell me, um, you know, what, what does my brain represent? And they went, well, technically, you're straight. Uh, oh. And I went, what? <laughs> oh, my God, I better go buy a cat. <laughs> Closest I'll have ever come to pussy. Anyway, um... Oh, please, like, you don't know I talk that way. <laughs> Just kidding, I, I've had two cats in my time. Um, <laughs> that explains a lot of stuff. Does it? Yeah. yeah. You know what? Never say never, honey. <laughs> never say never. Yeah. Anyway, Clary, don't remember any of this. <laughs> um, any other questions? Anyone else? Like yes. <laughs> Carol. What Thank you... God. <laughs> you asked it. I thought I was just here, you know? What, I would like to know what your initial reaction was the first time you realized that people were screaming over your baby brother. Well, first of all, I thought they were nuts. <laughs> <laughs> Actually, it was really um, an odd experience. I don't know if any of you have read my Shopping with Captain Jack experience. <laughs> that really was what happened. I mean, we were literally in the middle of this grocery store, and all of a sudden, we were getting mobbed, you know, by the vegetables, and, you know... <laughs> And he... <laughs> Not the produce. <laughs> People in Cardiff are smart. They're, They're not very nice. <laughs> there is not a ton of among them. They're very nice. <laughs> this is my moment. <laughs> my... <laughs> Other than Claire, it's the only one who's going to ask me a question. Um, anyway, so really, truly... <laughs> So really, that was truly what it was, it was, really it was an epiphany moment because, you know, he, you know, we're typical brother and sister and he said, here, you take the list and go do the groceries. I do not do grocery shopping much. It's not something, even in our house, it's not what I do. And so I said, I am not doing this. And he looked at me and said, nobody wants your fucking picture on their phone. <laughs> So, you know, that was the, my epiphany. And, and Carol, yes they do. <laughs> I'm a dignified woman of, of almost 50, so I'm not um, So that was really, it was a kind of a cool moment. I did, I went and did the groceries and, and waited at the line because John had to pay for them. So, yeah, but not a lot else has changed between no. us too much, no. Anyone else? Any others? Yes. Uh, I'll be the one to ask. Season three, what's going on? Uh, season three, it's uh, being written at the moment. I've just read the first script. It will be uh, five episodes as opposed to ten or thirteen because we're moving to BBC One, and be <laughs> yeah, yeah, and because of that, we have to have uh, we have to make an impact, and uh, we can't spend the whole series reintroducing the characters to BBC One viewers. So we have to make an impact, get it shown. And then when series four comes, if that happens, mm -hmm. you know, which I'm, um, I don't know, we will see. But uh, series four would mean that we go back to ten 
episodes. So um, it's about making an impact. It'll be a mini series. I mean, the, the first script is just nonstop, action packed, and the stuff that happens in it is unbelievable. And uh, that will be the, the storyline. It'll be a beginning in, on the Monday and an ending on the Friday. Thank and you, you learn a lot more about Captain Jack. <laughs> Thank you very much. Oh, does, does BBC One mean there won't be any more Yanto jumping? Oh, no, 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 no. Just because we're on there doesn't mean that, that that's going to change. Okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah, no, but Jack will start jumping on others, too, anyway. <laughs> so, yes. What's your natural accent? Uh, it depends who I'm speaking to. With Americans, I, this is my natural accent. When I'm speaking to my sister, it's Scottish. And, it's Scottish, and I speak with a Scottish accent with my mum and dad. And it's not a put-on accent, but I, I don't feel comfortable speaking to Americans with this accent. Because when I was a kid, as you're reading the book, kids made fun of the Scottish accent. So I just don't do it to protect really? myself. Now yeah? we think it's sexy. Yeah, well, you should have told me that when I was nine. <laughs> Actually, the, the, term we, the term we gave it in the book is bi-dialectical. Yeah. <laughs> Very fitting. Yeah. And it's weird if, you, if you're if you around us at all, John, John and I will turn and I'll say something to him in Scottish and then I'll turn around and I'll be an American, you know, so. My nieces and nephews are fucked up because of that. Yeah. <laughs> right, Claire? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. It was very funny because my niece and nephew, when they were uh, kids, they would pick up certain words, and my, my parents' dog's name was, as you'd say, Maddie, but my mom and dad would say, Matty. And so the kids would be talking, Mom, Dad, when are we going to go see Matty? <laughs> John also taught my children very early on, and I, you'll see that, hear this, and read this in the book, every, pretty much every swear word yeah. in Scottish, yeah. But, yeah. you know, that they could. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. With the bribery of money. Say it. <laughs> Say it when you're at the supermarket checkout counter. Vagina. <laughs> or, 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 <laughs> yeah. or go into McDonald's and at, they won't get it though because they. You, oh, that, well, no. Shite, shite is shit. Right? And I had them go in and ask for a shite McFlurry. <laughs> With Grandma and Papa who were peeing themselves because they were laughing so hard. And the girl behind this counter is going, How do you make one of those? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, well, you put some Reese's peanut butter cups, some toffee, and you make it look just like shite. You stir it all up. Tastes great. <laughs> anyway. Any more? Anyone else? Yes. Can you talk about the writing process and how you divvied up the writing process? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll do my part, and then my sister can say hers. Well, my writing process was an iPod. <laughs> and I, I dictated everything into an iPod uh, because I am not gifted and talented in the way of writing because if I did it, there would be spelling mistakes, grammar mistakes, and it would read like... <laughs> really. So... <laughs> but, uh, I, you know, an iPod. And I, I put iTalk into it and I dictated to it. I would do it... I commute a lot back and forth from, I have a home in Cardiff in Wales and I also have a home in London and we go, I go back and forth an awful lot uh, traveling. So when I was in the car and Carol came over and spent three months with me going to work, basically she was like a mole on my shoulder. I shadowed my gay man. Yeah. <laughs> she, has, she has developed an inner gay. <laughs> Yeah. So every time she, every, it's what she's. Well, I'll, I'll let you tell me. Yeah. So that was that. That was my process of doing it. I, I. There was hours upon hours of, you know, and months of the dictating stuff. But she did the formulating, and I'll let you t her tell about it. Yeah. Um. When when John was asked to do the book, he pretty much said Carol has to write it, and and um, we thought that would be great. And the the funniest thing I remember about the stories was a lot of times he would start a story, and then. I would, of course, correct him as the big sister. No, that was not quite the way. And there was one time in the trailer, remember, at um, when you were filming for Torchwood, and we got in this huge argument about who had said what to whom. So we had to call my mother, you know, and ask her to, to negotiate, you know, what, what, what was actually happening. Um, a lot of times we ate a lot. Lots when we were going eggs. back and forth um, between Cardiff and London, he, I would have the eye talk, and I'd have a set of questions that I was interested in that I thought would flesh out some of the parts when you know I wasn't around and, and some of his early stuff in the West End. And at one point, we were in his car, we're driving to London, and we're passing candy back and forth, and we're eating it because we hadn't been you know eating and eating dinner. And I got home two months later, and I'm actually listening to these tapes, right? And I'm, you know, trying to get the dialogue down, and then I'm going to... And all I can hear is, here, oh, try one of these. <laughs> 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 you 
was one of these. And then, did you remember when you went, <laughs> there's nothing. There's nothing on the tape except, yeah, and then candy wrappers going, <laughs> But I have to tell you just one other funny story, and then we'll take, a, we'll take some questions. I really literally did shadow him and follow him around yeah, for those three yeah, months. Yeah. And the first time we went on the... Except the, in the bathroom. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, we had a few ill moments, things that you really don't want to hear about your brother. I don't care whether they're gay or straight, you know, I don't want to hear them about them. So we did have a few ill, Ill moments. Yeah. But um, when we first went to the, the set, I, we grew up with Doctor Who. And so I've been a huge fan, and he gave, gave me the tour of the set, and he's walking around. And he said, stay there just for a minute, i got to go check with somebody. And we were kind of in this warehouse area, which is the best way to describe where Torchwood and Doctor Who are filmed. And we're standing outside this sort of uh, tent-like kind of area, and it has this sliding door. He says, wait there for a minute. And then he goes around, and the door slides open, and here is a Dalek going, exterminate, exterminate. <laughs> I tell you, I kid you not, I almost peed my pants. <laughs> Actually, I think I did pee my pants. Yeah. I had big children. Uh, if, if, you know, and he, of course. <laughs> oh, please. Yeah. Um, he, he had actually got the guy who, you know, paints the Daleks yeah, to good. wheel one out and, and, speak. and speak while, you know, he pulled the door open. You can see, we had a lot of fun. And I think the book captures some of it. We hope it does. Yeah, the one thing that we didn't want, when I had the... I had the initial meeting with the uh, uh, the publishers, with Michael O'Mara, and then when Carol and I talked, we didn't want it to be like your typical autobiography where we start at the beginning, you know, like, Sorry. let's start at the very beginning. That was the song, there you go. Um, uh, we start at the beginning and then you get up to now because you know what, that's just boring. You know, most of you who know me know all what I've done, and there's a thing in that we decided we'll put something in the back that has a history of all the stuff that I've, I've done through my career. So what we did was we wanted to not do it chronologically. We wanted to jump around because that's how I talk. I never, <laughs> I never stay on one focus. I'm always all over the place. So um, we wanted it to reflect that, and the Michael Lamar were a bit weary about that, but... Twelve and a half weeks in the bestseller list in the top ten that kind of worked. I think people liked it. And that's a lot of the com that was one of the big things that everyone commented on. We like how it jumps around and the little asides because that's also how I talk. You know, I might say something and then have a little in quotes kind of thing next to it. So. And we also organized it around um, songs that were meaningful to John yeah. from all of his favorite shows. And and those of you who have been following John for years should be able to figure out what shows. And then those song titles sort of captured a theme, and so that gave sort of the, the flow and the hook to the writing. But we did have a lot of fun writing it. Yeah. yeah. You had a lot of late nights. <laughs> yeah. um, yes. In relation to some of the stage work that you've done, what are some of the challenges and differences between acting here in the States and acting in England? And which do you like better? Um, I, well, I wouldn't say which one I like better because that's kind of personal, and I'd, I'd like to be employed in both. <laughs> No. Um, I, 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 enjoy, I enjoy work, so it doesn't really matter where it is. I mean, at the moment I'm in Toronto, Canada, doing How Do You Solve a Problem Like Maria for Canadian television, and uh, I enjoy that. Um, the differences between acting and, I mean, there's just a lot more people here, and I'll be, I'll be totally blunt, because I am, I, I'm putting on my judge hat now, there's so many people who shouldn't be in the business because they're shit. <laughs> name one. I'm not going to name one. I don't mean no. I don't mean that. I don't mean that is like uh, people you know who are work who are, because there are people who are working who are not that good, but they've been lucky and that's great. But I'm talking about people who are you know my age and still studying. I kind of don't. That doesn't follow my line. If you by a certain age you should really know how to do it, and if you don't, then think of something else because you know because those are the people usually. If, and if you're happy doing that, that's great. Totally great. No, 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 really, if you're happy. But if you're bitter and you find that you're bitching about a lot of people, change the plan. Change the plan. But acting over here is, uh, I, I mean, it's not more difficult. It's just, you know, a different, a different thing. I mean, I've done two TV series over here. And once you're done, the difference with the UK, I can go off and do something else. And I can present. I can record an album. I can do all that other stuff. Kind of here they want to pigeonhole you. And one thing which is much more difficult, because I like to call us entert entertainers rather than actors or singers. Because I, it's the entertainment business, so I'm here to entertain. Whether that's through judging, presenting, uh, being a character in a series, singing, or on the stage, that's all part of my business. So, 
Yeah. Any possibility that you might perform in L.A.? Um, don't know. Don't know. You'll have to ask my manager back there. The big gay one on the box. <laughs> 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 Teresa Tall, you're very tall tonight. <laughs> yes. Yeah, we've read about your relationship with Scott, which is very, very strong and has uh, obviously succeeded through the success that you've had. Yeah. How, how's he coping with uh, your... Um, I think he's picking stardom. your pockets right now. Yeah, he's going around. He's, <laughs> we need gas money to go to San Diego tonight, so he's picking your pockets. <laughs> Um, I, you know, that uh, it's a difficult question for me to answer on his behalf, but I won't ask him up here because he know he doesn't like doing it. Uh, he left. And he already left. He's uh, probably outside reading Newsweek or something like that. He's right there. He's back there with our friends. Um, I, I, if I'm if I'm wrong, Scott, just shout. I, I don't think he really it bothers him because he said before to me that he is happy when I'm happy, and if he sees me, he sees that I enjoy it. And he, uh, <laughs> he's saying something else, can you tell? Um, I'm not saying it's been all smooth sailing and it's been really, you know, uh, it's been easy all the time because that's one thing with the book, I don't want you to think it's been all hunky-dory because we have had problems and things that have happened. But the difference that, that I, the way I look at it and what I've learned from my mother and father um, is if you really care about the person, if there's a little hump in the road and something goes wrong, do you love them enough to dump them, or do you love them enough to work through it and continue and move on from it and start either with a clean slate or, or just, you know, that was a bump and we move on, that's life. And we've chosen to do that, and I think that's how it's gone for, what, 15 or going on 16 years. So, but I, the, the success, he's, you know, he, he actually finally, thank God, because sometimes I'm like, you know, did you enjoy the show? Yeah, it was good. It was good. Yeah. What was that? costume she was wearing. What? <laughs> what about my performance? Yeah, we were good, but what about that costume? Really? You know, and I'm going, so he sometimes doesn't, you know, pay that much attention to it. It's, it's kind of like, that's my job, and that's what I do, and that's the way he looks at it, really, and I think that's what keeps it healthy. Yes, sir? Um, how personally important is it to you to play um, an openly gay character, especially on a family show? Well, we don't see Captain Jack as being openly gay. We you see. Know, it's a different sexuality, though. It's a different thing. We seem as. I, I understand what you're saying, and I'll, I'll kind of answer that in my kind of own way, roundabout. Because I, I, I kind of wish we kind of move on from. And I am proud to be a gay man. Don't get me wrong. And I think the the more we kind of move on and just call ourselves men, that you know. That's what we are, but we just do say things a little... Well, actually, we don't do it differently because everybody does the same thing. We all end up in one Ew. hole or another. <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what I mean? So, but anyway, with Captain Jack, I think I'm, I'm proud to play Captain Jack. The whole omnisexuality of him and the fact that he has a relationship with Yanto uh, and uh, still fancies other people. It's great because it, the British public really don't care. I mean, they, they look at it as just being a relationship, and they like, you know, the, I, I say this all the time, and I'm sorry if you've heard it before, and I repeat myself. I, I went to a signing. Um, I'm going to Comic-Con. That's why we're going to San Diego tonight. <laughs> so tomorrow, yeah, if I look tired, you'll know why. I'll be like, this is the car! Um, and there's seven of us in it with lots of snacks, so you'll hear a lot of paper rustling. Um... I, the, the, one of the proudest moments for me, really, was the fact when a, a father brought his young son up to have an autograph, and he said, you know, to his son, let's just call him Tim. Tim, do you want a, an autograph from Captain Jack? And he said, yeah, Dad, I don't care if he likes boys. I, he's still my hero. <laughs> so that, for me, um, that it's not kids who have the problem. And family viewing, you know, families are very different. Families can be two guys, two girls with kids, one single parent. And that's the, the one thing that I love about Russell, about uh, the BBC, about uh, Torchwood, Doctor Who, we actually tackle issues that are current that we all deal with. You know, we don't sugarcoat anything. Um, you know, it, we deal with all that stuff, and kids appreciate that. They appreciate being talked to like adults. Um, you know, it's like my, my niece and nephew, uh, when we were talking to them about the book, and they were talking for the documentary, funnily enough, uh, you know, Turner, my nephew, was like, he was asked a question about, um, uh, you know, well, sorry, Claire said, you know, we've known nothing different than Uncle John and Scott. That's it. So, you know, when people would say things to them at school about gay people or fag or whatever, they'd be like, we don't get it because that's not our Uncle John. She thought everybody had a gay she uncle. She thought everyone had a gay uncle. 
Honest to God, she did. She did. That was the most shocking to her that everybody didn't have one. You know, like a Barbie doll. I'll do one more and then we're done. Then we gotta finish. Uh, I was a gentleman here. I know this. Yeah. What was it like working on a Mel Brooks film? It was interesting. Mel, Mel was lovely. Mel and I hit it off really well. Um, when I was recording the, the song uh, in the studio be, pr prior to doing, for, you know, for the album and stuff, because I, uh, we obviously do it to track when we're doing the show, or the movie. Um, the, uh, we actually were delayed by about two or three hours because he and I were talking about Florida, <laughs> of all things, you know. And there was one, one part that was really quite funny. I'm doing the, uh, we're rehearsing springtime for Hitler. And there's a chapter in the book, which is, uh, it's um, um, Peter Prick, who uh, <laughs> shall, shall, you know his real name, <laughs> shall remain nameless. Um, I'm not going to say it. Uh, and uh, we did this whole number, and they were out rehearsing a, a bunch of Nazis over, you know, in a parking lot in Brooklyn, <laughs> in a Hasidic Jewish area. Hey, look at you! Um, you know, it was unbelievable. And there's all, all, <laughs> all of a sudden, Mel Brooks comes running out and he goes, Jesus Christ, what are you doing? Get in here, you'll have us all killed. Look at them all over the fence. <laughs> Imagine it, there was like 75 Nazis. Full garb, all fabulous looking. Anyway, that, uh, thank you very much. The fact, I, I, I kind of say this, and I'm saying it on behalf of my sister, I appreciate that you bought the book. Um, I, I've had a, a great career and thus far, and I've also, you know, enjoy, I'm enjoying my life incredibly, and it's thanks to people like you who support me and buy my things, and, you know, it keeps, it, make, it puts a big smile on my face, so thank you very, very much, and I know I speak for my sister, too, because you're helping put her kids through college. <laughs> thank you so, so much. You're welcome. Thank you. All right, you guys. So this is gonna. This is the tricky part. We're gonna sign in the back, but everybody's gonna file around this way. All right, and they're gonna follow us back there. So be careful. Don't kill each other. But oh my! Oh my! Oh my. You know this doing about face? Yeah. Okay. That was fun. What? This way? Yeah. Okay, we're going this way. Here, oh, this way. Uh, she's okay. still videoing? We'll get with Jeff. Jeff's a safe bet. So, sir. Oh, God. Oh, God. Oh, my God. So, he, he can make. Wow. Are you happy? I am. Are you happy? I'm happy. Make a do. Oh, yeah. I have the software so 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 I have to so be very careful. Any notes? Did you enjoy yourself? Yes, I did. Yes.